Hello my soccer universe and let's look back at what happened in Serie A this past weekend. No, no Coppa Italia yet. I'm watching the first semi-final uh, here, first leg, as I'm recording this video. So we'll uh, comment on this in a different video. And while I will go quick, uh, briefly through the games as well, I actually want to focus on the two most scrutinized coaches in Serie A this season, which are the coaches of two of the biggest teams that both they have been tagged for Pioli out and Allegri out. At the moment, if you ask me, it is more Allegri out and Pioli in. Just a few months ago, it was the other way around, where Milan again seemed to have a hitting a bad patch and everything, Pioli out. He, he is holding the team back, blah, blah, blah. And at the moment, Milan is playing actually quite entertaining and really well. It is fun again. Maybe not as fun as it was at the beginning of the season, but it's really fun to watch Milan at this very moment. Whereas Juventus, they have only one win in the last nine games, and that was a last minute win against Frosinone. Uh, not too long ago, I think at the end of, of the year, Juve were like six or seven points ahead of Milan. Now it has completely flipped the script. It is absolutely uh, devastating what is ha happening to Juventus. And yes, there were some, uh, of course, some cir 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 circumstances behind this, you know. Uh, well, Pogba was not a big figure. I mean, him never getting to him is definitely something. Uh, you're losing, um, you know, you have your Rabios in there, you have a lot of young kids, and maybe Allegri is more of a, you know, player manager than actually someone who is uh, can give great technical instructions to young kids. I think that's all uh, in there as well once we're having this discussion. But it seems still. Um, the first tenure of Allegri seemed to be always up and then basically he was stumbling over having suddenly Ronaldo disrupting his way that he wanted to have Juve play as a unit. Then he comes back into an absolute mess following, actually I think that Pirlo was not that bad and I think Pirlo should have given a whole lot more time than he had. But he wanted to go back to Allegri and it has been up and up, down, up and down. I think last season without the points deductions, yes, they would have safely finished in the Champions League. At the moment, this is in question. I think the one saving grace for Juventus will probably be, although it's getting tight, it's really getting tight. The Roman teams are lifting, uh, will be that Italy is very likely to get five spots. It's not secured yet, and let me tell you, uh, at this very moment, when you see now the cal calculation, I'm still assuming that Italy only gets four spots. Um, but, you know, always have, have in mind, there might be a fifth spot for Serie A in there, depending on how the Italian teams will do in Europe. And I think they're a relatively well positioned in the Europa League and in the Conference League. So it looks quite well there. Uh, and yeah, we have an Italian dual camp coming up. We also have an Atalanta team that is probably hitting at the moment at the right level. But going back to Pioli and Allegri, I honestly think unless Inter again show up Pioli, and this is probably the one thing because if you look at the overall results and at this, this season is not so far off the two, season two years ago when Milan won the title, where yes, probably Inter stumbled uh, there a little bit too much. You were I don't want to say gifted the title because the last run where you won, 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 won was amazing. But in the end, it was an Inter loss at Bologna that no one expected that got you the title. And everyone said you were ahead of the curve. Then you made a semi-final in the Champions League la last year, which is still uh, more of a bitter taste last season because you lost and you never had, had a chance against Inter in the semi-final. And then the third, the third, the third or early on, and you know, the way it pans out right now is that Inter could clinch the title by winning the derby against Milan. And that is a situation that could be very toxic for our Pioli. But on the other side, let me show you here a little graphic. Uh, these are all the performances of uh, the rating for Milan ever since Allegri left Milan. And you see as soon as Pioli takes over, there's only one way. It is up. Yes, it is not a straight line, but it's up, 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 up. Pioli has been continuously improving this team. At the moment, this team seems to be gelling again. And Milan are fortunately in position that they can, could potentially invest in the summer, whereas other teams like Inter have been doing the impossible by losing their best players and still get, getting better. How long can they repeat that trick? And Juventus think Allegri is only staying in because 
Juventus cannot afford sacking him because of the finances. So uh, I think both coaches will probably stay in. It's not for the worst of Milan. I think Milan, I think getting an, a, a different coach in a tough environment as, as Milan, unless it's a proven coach, and I'm not talking Conte here, I don't want to see anything of Conte, Pioli will, I think having Pioli stay is kind of safe. He knows the squad, he knows what, what, what he wants to achieve. With Allegri, it is more, you know, uh, I think the closer you get to the end of his contract, the more affordable it will be to sack him. As I said, with Allegri, it ran a little bit stale. That's probably where it should end. The loss against Lazio on the weekend was just another one of these performances. But then on the other side, uh, look at the squad that he has. Is this a squad that should finish in the top four? Don't deny that, but it's not a squad that should challenge Inter for a title, which they have been doing for half a season. Never forget that. But I would say let's look a little bit over the, the, the results. I mean, the weekend started with a big bang when Atalanta went to Napoli and won their 3-0. Yes, the scoreline was too high. Let's say that, but Atalanta were good for the win. Fully deserved it. Mirancho against Gamaka in the first half. Uh, Galata goes and late my, on uh, Cope, Cope Myers in the uh, 88th. Make, makes it a really big win for Atalanta. It was a little bit with Atalanta in red and Napoli playing at home in new white city jerseys. was also weird to look at. Uh, Genoa, a little bit of a, a fall, fallback. Only a 1 1 against Frosinone. But you know, Gen Genoa is a, a team that is very safe, being just, just more very safe, which it has not always been. Torino beat Monza. That's kind of a a surprising result and then we had Lazio against Juve uh, that was a game that I think for the most of the time was relatively even but in the last 10-15 minutes I really felt that Lazio are the other team that are better in the game that can kick into the next uh, level and I have to say Tudor who just came in for a sec Sarri uh, no Sarri wasn't sec Sarri stepped down Although, you know, you never know <laughs> with Lotito how it really went down. Uh, but Tudor wanted his team to be a little bit more adventurous than they have been under, under, under Sarri. Although his uh, criticism of Sarri I find a little bit unwarranted because, let, let's face it, I mean, they finished second, which for Lazio is not, last, last season, which for Lazio is not a uh, given in, in any way. But he brought on down Vecino, Guendouzi, Luis Alberto very, very offensively. And they were pressing for that go-ahead goal. And then Morales with the last kick of the game. Marisic heads in a Guendouzi cross. Very similar to the Provedel goal against Atletico Madrid. It also has to be said. And uh, Lazio win it. It was just a key kickoff. And Juve are now really looking into yeah, a kind of a roughish situation. In, in the table where Lazio actually give themselves a little bit of shot shot. And I'm ahead of the big derby that is coming up. Then Fiorentina Milan, I think it was an absolutely crazy, intense game. There were chances on both sides. I think at the early stage it was more Milan. Then there were a few situations where uh, the defense for Milan was not in very well sorted and uh, Fiorentina created many chances. Then at the end of the first half, it was again a little bit more uh, Milan again. Uh, right after the half, the game really kicked in, 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 into next level. And Leao with a back heel assist to Loftus Cheek. Yes, in the middle, Mil Milenkovic is falling over. Uh, and Loftus Cheek can put in 47th minute. One, one in a minute. I thought it was a deserved lead. However, <laughs> Duncan almost immediately equalized. And then a Reinders pass sees Leao go through the Fiorentina fans, rounding the goalkeeper. And he makes him 53rd, third minute, 2 1. So basically, within five minutes, there were five, three goals scored. Um, Fiorentina was rattled. Yes, this came on the heels of um, uh, Joe Baroni uh, passing away, the omnipresent sporting director. So there was a whole lot of emotion in the stadium and Fiorentina played play with emotion. This was not an easy atmosphere to play in. So kudos for Milan. Fiorentina really tried, but uh, if they don't have a strike up front. And this is basically what was there on um, doing. Although there were times when Milan really had a hard time clearing the ball. But they run away win winners and you know, as long as Leao was on the pitch, I really felt that it was a great performance. It was also news that Giroud is seemingly going to MLS. Um, if that was the case, I really would thank him for his services. He's still probably the best striker, but I think it's also time to move on, go a little bit mobile up front. Uh, so I'm fine with that. Bologna also continued their good, good run and are now really set for a top four finish. Two great goals by Orsolini, 
who is, I think, one of these underrated Italy players at the moment. And Alexis Salamakas coming from, from, from Milan, 2-2 two, two at the half. And then uh, Luka Janis makes it 3-0 in stoppage time. Kalir and Ellers in a relegation scrap make it uh, play out the 1-1. Estu Sasso and Udine. Lecce should have won against Roma. Uh, Lecce is another team that cannot convert their chances. This was, yes, it says nil-nil, but this was a very entertaining game. And Roma, this was, you know, the last two performances. When um, the Rossi came in, it was kind of exciting. Now, maybe they're hitting a little plateau at the, uh, at, at the moment. They have now big games coming up. We have the Derby next weekend. And then there's Europa League against Milan. So uh, maybe they're holding back for that. Or it's really the sign that things have plateaued. And then, of course, we had uh, Inter getting a relatively easy win over Empoli, another team that really can get a score. Di Marco and Sanchez get getting get goals, but honestly, it was not, you know, it was not even a game that I was watching. I noted the, 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 the result and I heard a little bit about it, but that was about it. Um, Upcoming games, as I said, we have a car cup at the moment. You and Lazio at halftime, it's nil nil. Uh, when this post, you already know the result. And with Fiorentina Atalanta, which I think is quite an exciting game, although I would favor Atalanta. Also, note that this is the game that was postponed because of Joe Baroni having the heart attack. Um, and then uh, at the end of, of the month, they have the return legs with the final being played in May. And there are two big games on the upcoming weekend with Roma against Lazio. A Roman Derby. Uh, now it's not started against Gans Mourinho, which kind of was always kind of stale. De Rossi against Tudor. That could potentially be exciting. And then we have Juve against Fiorentina, which is always a uh, emotional duel coming from the Fiorentina side mostly. Milan play Lecce, Udine host Inter. And Monza against Napoli. Will there be another OOO performance for the Napolitans? That remains to be seen. They probably need Quara back. So that was it from me from CFRA. I think it was more coaches uh, focus now, but I think that's fair because uh, the round itself, while having good uh, games in there, uh, did not have that big upheaval except for Lazio beating Juve in the table. In any case, let me know your thoughts on CRA. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you soon about more things. In my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!